Introduction to Retail Banking We all know in common parlance, retail banking is typical mass market banking where individual customers use local branches of larger commercial banks. Services offered comprise savings and checkings account, mortgages, personal loans, debit cards, credit cards and so on. In this lesson, we will explain the main subset of retail banking products and services, discuss the types of financial risk and discuss the advantages of retail banking. After going through this presentation, you should be able to discuss the main subset of retail banking, explain managing liquidity, asset risk and default risk, discuss the payment services, Describe the different types of financial risk. Discuss difference between retail, private and priority banking and state the advantages of retail banking. Retail banking is typical mass marketing banking where individual customers use local branches of larger commercial banks. Retail banks offer a range of services to individual customers and small businesses rather than to large companies and other banks. Retail banks perform two very significant functions for customers. Firstly, they enable customers to bank their money securely, access it easily and conduct transactions. And secondly, they provide access to additional money to fund large purchases such as buying a home. In return for holding customer funds, which they can then invest, banks pay customers interest. There are two main subset of retail banking, which are intermediation services. It includes liquidity risk and default risk. And second is payment services. Liquidity risk relates to the risk of the bank having insufficient funds to meet its cash outflow commitments. A bank in particular is vulnerable to this risk because of the structure of its balance sheet. The main assets held by a retail bank are advances and these are subject to the risk of default or credit risk. A payment service is an accounting procedure whereby transfer of ownership of certain assets are carried out in settlement of debts incurred. The services include current accounts, savings account, investment advice and broking, and loan and mortgages. Liquidity risk relates to the risk of the bank having insufficient funds to meet its cash outflow commitments. A bank in particular is vulnerable to this risk because of the structure of its balance sheet. If a bank is needed to repay a substantial amount of deposits, then it will soon find itself in a situation where it has insufficient funds as most of its assets are committed in long-term advances. There are two main strategies a bank can adopt to manage this problem. Reserve asset management necessitates a bank to hold a stock of liquid assets to protect the liquid advances portfolio from a circumstantially large outflow of funds. Liability management involves a bank managing its liabilities to meet loan commitments or replenish lost liquidity. One form that this could take is simply to adjust interest rates on its deposits. Assets held by retail banks are advances. These advances are subject to the risk of default or credit risk. This risk drives from individual decisions of borrowing. Many of the assets held by a retail bank are subject to the risk of a fall in value below that recorded in the balance sheet. The main assets held by a retail bank are advances and these are subject to the risk of default or credit risk. There are five ways by which banks can manage default risk. These are first is screening. Banks can minimize the risk of default for each individual loan by considering the purpose of the loan and the financial condition of the borrower. The bank should be aiming to select good risk only. Credit scoring is increasingly being used by banks in this process of risk analysis. 
and the advantage of credit scoring is that it can be largely automated. The second is pooling. Banks can undertake a large number of small loans rather than a small number of large loans. This is an application of the law of large numbers to the loan portfolio which reduces the variability of loan loss, so increasing the predictability of loss through default. Third is diversification. Banks can diversify the loan portfolio by lending to a wide range of different types of borrowers. Fourth is collateral. A bank may ask for a collateral or security to be provided by the borrower. If the loan then goes to default, then the bank is able to sell the collateral and so recover some or the entire loan. Finally is capital. A bank should hold capital. This provides a cushion against loss in the event of default losses, which protects depositors from its effects. Most retail banks also provide payment services. A payment service is an accounting procedure whereby transfer of ownership of certain assets are carried out in settlement of debts incurred. A payment service can be separated into three components. First is a medium of exchange enabling customers to acquire goods. Second is a medium of payment to effect payment for the goods acquired and third is a temporary store of purchasing power since income and expenditure are generally not synchronized. Paper money issued by governments fulfills these three functions. A bank check account that is the liabilities of a bank also provides these three functions. It is widely accepted as a medium of exchange and a medium of payment. Funds can also be stored in the account until purchases are made. There are four types of risk which retail banks can try to diversify and manage. Credit risk may be defined as the risk of default on the part of the borrower. The lender always faces the risk of the counterparty not repaying the loan or not making the due payment in time. This uncertainty of repayment by the borrower is also known as default risk. Market risk may be defined as the possibility of loss to a bank caused by the changes in the market variables. It is the risk that the value of on or off balance sheet positions will be adversely affected by movements in equity and interest rate markets, currency exchange rates and commodity prices. Interest rate risk is the potential negative impact on the net interest income and it refers to the vulnerability of an institution financial condition to the movement in interest rates. Changes in interest rate affect earnings, value of assets, liability, off balance sheet items and cash flow. Operational risk in general is defined as any risk which is not categorized as market or credit risk or the risk of loss arising from various types of human or technical error. It is also synonymous with settlement or payment risk and business interruption, administrative and legal risk. Operational risk has some form of link between credit and market risk. An operational problem with a business transaction could trigger a credit or market risk. Retail banking aims to be the one-stop shop for as many financial services as possible on behalf of retail clients. Some retail banks have even made a push into investment services such as wealth management, brokerage accounts, private banking and retirement planning. Private banking is a much more personalized banking service given to individuals. The most noticeable difference between retail and private banking services are that private clients receive customer service on a one-to-one -one basis via a relationship manager or a private banker. The rationale is that such high levels of wealth allow these individuals to participate in alternative investments such as hedge funds and real estate. Furthermore, this level of wealth often prevents liquidity problems. The basic purpose of this form of banking is to make the experience of banking hassle-free 
and less time consuming. Priority banking is relatively new in the Indian context. In this form of banking, the bank identifies its priority customers, often customers with deposits above 1 lakh. However, this is different for each individual bank and some special benefits are provided to these first class customers by the bank. Advantages are analyzed from the resource angle and asset angle. Advantages are effective customer relationship management with the retail customers built a strong customer base. Retail banking increases the subsidiary business of the banks. Retail deposits are stable and constitute core deposits. They are interest insensitive and less bargaining for additional interest. They constitute low-cost funds for the banks. Banks can earn good profits by providing non-fund-based or free-based services without deploying their funds. Consumer loans are presumed to be of lower risk and NPA perception. Diversified portfolio due to huge customer base enables banks to reduce their dependence on few or single borrower. It helps economic revival of the nation through increased production activity, improves lifestyle and fulfills aspiration of the people through affordable credit. Innovative product development credit and retail banking involves minimum marketing efforts in a demand-driven economy. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Market risk relates to the risk of the bank having insufficient funds to meet its cash outflow commitments. Right or wrong? Wrong. Liability management involves a bank managing its liabilities to meet loan commitments or replenish lost liquidity. Right or wrong? Right. In private banking, the bank identifies its priority customers and some special benefits are provided to these first-class customers by the bank. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Retail banking is typical mass marketing banking where individual customers use local branches of larger commercial banks. Retail banks offer a range of services to individual customers and small businesses rather than to large companies and other banks. There are two main subset of retail banking which are intermediation services. It includes liquidity risk and default risk and the second is payment services. Liquidity risk relates to the risk of the bank having insufficient funds to meet its cash outflow commitments. A bank in particular is vulnerable to this risk because of the structure of its balance sheet. Assets held by retail banks are advances. These advances are subject to the risk of default or credit risk. Screening. Banks can minimize the risk of default for each individual loan by considering the purpose of the loan and the financial condition of the borrower. Pooling. Banks can undertake a large number of small loans rather than a small number of large loans. A bank may ask for collateral or security to be provided by the borrower. If the loan then goes to default then the bank is able to sell the collateral and so recover some or the entire loan. A payment service is an accounting procedure whereby transfer of ownership of certain assets are carried out in settlement of debts incurred. Market risk may be defined as the possibility of loss to a bank caused by the changes in the market variables. Private banking is a much more personalized banking service given to individuals. The most noticeable difference between retail and private banking services are that private clients receive customer service on a one-to-one -one basis via a relationship manager or a private banker. It helps economic revival of the nation through increased production activity. 
improves lifestyle and fulfills aspiration of people through affordable credit. Innovative product development credit and retail banking involves minimum marketing efforts in a demand-driven economy.